us to the third episode in a series of episodes that are focused on the August 2023 Science Paper 2. So in the previous episode we covered the question 7 through 10. Then the first episode covered the question 1 through 6. So in this episode we are starting with question 11. And just to take note, if you are new to this channel, please consider subscribing so that each time I upload a video, you get a notification. And if you find this video to be helpful, please consider liking, sharing, and also suggesting through the comment section on the way we can improve the content that we deliver on this channel so that it helps you to ace your G12 exams. Then if you find this video to be helpful, please consider indicating so that I know that the content I'm making is having an impact on a few or more people. So question A11 leads, why should water never be added to an acid when diluting a concentrated acid? So the question is why then we are diluting concentrated acid. It's important that you understand the question. If you understand the question then acing chemistry becomes very easy. So option A, the process of diluting acid is endothermic and concentrated acids have low affinity for water. So the process of diluting acid is not endothermic. So the problem is in here. This is not endothermic. One, so A cannot be collected. So just based on that, I can take out A. Why are we saying so? Because the process of diluting acid is in exothermic, not endothermic. Exothermic in the sense that this process releases heat rather than absorbing it. Remember, endothermic means the heat is absorbed. Exothermic means the heat is given out. So, this is not correct. Beam the process of diluting acid is exothermic, which is it true, and concentrated acid have high affinity for water. So this is collect. These two are collect, so B should be collect. Let us see option C. Water and acids are immiscible. No, this is not collect. In general, acid and water are miscible, meaning they can mix together in all proportions. So this is incorrect. D, water and acids are miscible. Yes, they are miscible, but this is not the reason why we should not add water to acid when we want to dilute it. So this is, of course, the statement is true, but that's not the reason. So B is correct. Question A12, the following graphs summarize the reaction between powdered calcium carbonate and the dilute hydrochloric acid of different concentrations and show the volume of gas produced. So we have um, the volume increasing, then the time increasing. Which graph shows the slowest chemical reaction? So we're looking for the slowest chemical reaction. So the slowest chemical reaction is the reaction that takes the longest time to finish. So at this point, we've reached the maximum. So the volume is not increasing. That's why this line is straight. So for reaction 4, we are taking this time. Then reaction 3, we are taking this time, which is lower than for reaction 4. So 3 is here. Then for 2 and 1, they are almost here. So at this point, they are almost at the same, but it 1 finishes a bit slightly early. So what you notice is reaction 4 takes the longest time. So D should be the collective answer because we're looking for the one that takes in the longest time because it is the slowest. If it was the fastest, we're going to look for one because one almost finishes slightly earlier than two, which finishes at this point. So you need to take note of that. Then the other thing that you need to take note is you need to know what are the factors that change the rate of chemical reaction. Number one, you see temperature. So you need to know temperature that's number one. Number two, you need to know the pressure. So the higher the pressure, the higher the rate of reaction. And the higher the temperature, the higher the rate of reaction. Then number three, 
we have concentration. So the higher the concentration, the, the higher the rate of reaction. Then you have sizes of particles. So sizes of particles. So powder dim, the smaller the particles, the higher the rate of reaction. Then number five, we have a use of catalyst use of catalyst so if you use the catalyst the catalyst will speed up the chemical reaction without itself being changed then we have the state of the matter which is in number six so this is the thing that we need to know other than knowing the answer so gases react more readily than liquids which in turn react more readily than solids so gases have the highest rate of reaction when you look at the three states of matter then question 13 element x has a valence of electron equal to six in which group of the periodic table does element x belong so we are looking for the group in which element x belong that's what the question wants us to identify so what is key with question 13 is understanding that the number of valence of electron in an atom correspond to the group number of the element in which the periodic table belong so we are looking for the number of electrons in the outermost shell so if the valence which is in this case equal to six it means this element belongs to group six so a should be the correct answer so other examples of elements that belong to this group which is group six we have oxygen we have sulfur then we have selenium so you need to know that question f14 how are elements on the periodic table arranged they are arranged according to their a boiling points so a is not necessarily correct because while boiling points can indicate certain properties of elements like in the state of matter are they solid are they liquid are they gases they are not used to arrange elements in the periodic table so this cannot be collect and of course boiling points can vary widely among elements and do not increase or decrease consistently across the period of the groups so a is out so b the mass number so the mass number which is the total number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus of an atom so while this is an important characteristic of each element it is not used to arrange elements in the periodic table this is because isotopes of an, an element can have different mass numbers but these will still occupy the same position in the periodic table so b is out then c melting points so like we said the boiling points again melting point is not correct proton numbers is the correct answer so to confirm this you go to the periodic table if you can't figure out you notice that we are starting with him hydrogen which has a one atomic number then we go to helium which has a two then we go to th lithium then four we've seen these are increasing all the way up to 10 then we come to 11 then we come to 19 because from here this is 18 this is 36 then this is 37 so as you move across the periodic table they are increasing until we reach this point where you are at 72 so at this 72 you you uh, jumping from 57 to 72 so this is 58 which is here then you go up to 71 down here then you come back here then you continue there up to 89 from 89 then you come and join here which is in 90 so you notice that they are increasing according to the proton numbers so hence d is the correct answer we look at question f15 which of the following explains why nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and the electricity? So we are saying why nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity. So we have option A. The electrons in them are localized and not mobile, which is collect. So this is collect in nonmetals. So in nonmetals, these electrons are localized they are not free to move thus nonmetals are poor conductors of heat and electricity because of that property that is to say electrons are not free to move around 
While in metals, the outermost electrons can move freely and are um, often referred to as delocalized electrons, which is the opposite of localized. Hence, A is the collecting answer. If you look at B, B, the ions in them are free and mobile. This is not true because nanometals do not typically form ions in their solid states. Ions are formed when atoms gain or lose electrons, which, are, which usually happens when metals react with nanometals. So B cannot be collected. See, the molecules in them are delocalized and are free and mobile. Again, this is not collect because in nanometals the molecules are not delocalized or free to move. Nanometals usually exist as in a discrete molecules which are held together by intermolecular forces, not by delocalized electrons. So hence that's the reasoning behind. Dim they have delocalized electrons which are free and mobile. Again, this is not true. This is true for metals. So D is out. Question 16. Which of the following is not a property of a typical metal? So we are looking for which property is not part of the properties of a typical metal. A. Britonis. So A is the correct answer. This is the one which is not correct. Because metals are typically not brittle. They are known for their malleability, which is the ability to be armored into thin sheets, and the ductility, which is the ability to be drawn into wires. So these properties they contrast with him the brittleness. So A is in collect conduct electricity, this is true. Ductibility is one I've talked about, then uh so, sonorosity, again, this is uh, true, which is the ability to produce deep and resonant sound. So, you notice that D is correct. So, A is the one which is incorrect. So, this is how you answer this question. So, join me in the next episode as we look at questioning A17 through 20.